I really love this Death Trooper model by Paul Braddock, so I decided to cast one in aluminum. After the model was done printing, I used some hot glue to attach a 3D printed sprue and vent to it. I also added some masking tape and a hook so I had something to hold onto and hang the model from as I coated it in the ceramic material. The ceramic shell material that I used is called suspend a slurry. I dipped the entire model into the ceramic slurry and then hung it on a pipe above the bucket to let the excess slurry drip off for a few minutes. After each coat, I sprinkled some dry silica sand over the still wet ceramic shell and let it dry for a few hours. The goal here is to create a thick ceramic shell which will become the mold. Over the course of a few days, I coated the model nine times before giving it one last coating without sand. Once everything was dry, I cut off the hook, wrapped the shell in some wire, and placed it in my kiln to allow it to bake for a few hours, in order to melt away the plastic and harden the ceramic shell. After about 40 minutes, which is how long it takes for the plastic to melt out of the shell, I opened up the kiln and removed the molten plastic. Then I put the shell back into the kiln and let it bake for a few hours at around 1500 to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Here you can see I'm placing a crucible full of aluminum scrap into my already hot furnace. It's hot because I had just finished doing another casting. And because my furnace was already hot, it only took a few minutes to melt roughly 7 pounds of aluminum. Once the shell was done baking and cooled down enough to handle, I blew out what little ash remained inside and buried it in sand up to the sprue and vent, being careful not to unintentionally drop sand into the mold. At this point I was ready to fill the mold with molten aluminum. I let the mold cool overnight, and the next morning I pulled it out of the sand and started breaking off the shell to see what I ended up with.
Most of the shell came off easily, but some areas were very difficult to remove. Fortunately, my sandblaster made quick work of the rest. The casting came out of the sandblaster with a dull finish, so after cutting off the sprue and vent, I used a wire brush and then some polish to shine up the helmet while leaving the skull untouched. I'm really happy with how this casting turned out, considering it was my first attempt. I'll definitely be using this method again in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, take a look at some of my others, and let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for future projects.